Welcome back to Madman Review. Self-defense instructors always tell you that you are your own first responder, meaning that in times of crisis, you must be ready and able to act to protect yourself and others. However, there are instances where another citizen with a firearm can serve as your first responder. This can occur when a crime is being committed and a nearby individual with a firearm is able to intervene and stop the perpetrator before the police arrives. In these cases, the armed citizen acts as a first line of defense, potentially saving lives and preventing further harm. Now, relying solely on others to protect you is not something you should even consider. But even then, it's nice to know that sometimes some people are fortunate enough to have fellow citizens nearby who are prepared to step in and help. In this video, we'll talk about an ATM robbery in Houston, Texas gone wrong. According to the police account of the incident, the victim of the robbery had initially complied with the perpetrator's demands. However, the situation quickly escalated when the suspect began to use physical violence, striking the victim in the head with his handgun. Fortunately, a passerby who happened to be driving by at the time of the robbery witnessed the attack and made the split-second decision to intervene. This armed citizen was able to draw his weapon and use it to subdue the suspect, preventing further harm from being inflicted. The quick thinking and decisive actions of this citizen undoubtedly saved the victim from further harm and apprehended a suspect who was later discovered to be wanted for murder in another state. It is a clear example of how responsible gun ownership can play a positive role in protecting innocent individuals and bringing dangerous criminals to justice. The use of guns for self-defense isn't like playing a game of Candy Crush. It is serious business. Sure, things turned out well in this particular case, but let's not forget that firearms have a potential to mess things up real bad. As such, it is crucial that individuals who choose to carry guns for self-defense undergo proper training and education to ensure that they can use their weapons safely and effectively in high-stress situations. ATMs and Texas Now let's talk about where this happened, Houston, Texas. It boggles the mind how and why someone would attempt to commit robbery in a state known for its permissive stance toward gun ownership. Even if the intended victim is unarmed, the likelihood of encountering an armed citizen who is willing and able to intervene on their behalf is not insignificant. In the case of the robbery at the ATM, it is fortunate that an armed citizen happened to be passing by and was able to come to the aid of the victim. Yet, despite the positive outcome of this particular incident, it is unfortunate that such examples of responsible gun ownership and community protection are rarely given the attention they deserve in mainstream media. If you think about it, situations like these happen more often than a Monday morning hangover. It's high time we recognize the vital role that responsible gun owners can play in promoting public safety and preventing crime. By highlighting these positive contributions, we can shift the conversation around gun ownership and put a spotlight on the good guys with guns. As for me, I just don't understand why people like using ATMs. The act of standing with your back turned to the world in front of an ATM that dispenses cash at the push of a button has always seemed to me like a scenario that is highly attractive to would-be robbers. The ease with which I can become a victim of a robbery in such a situation is precisely why I try to avoid using ATMs whenever possible. In many ways, it's like painting a target on your back and inviting criminals to take advantage of you. The inherent risk of becoming a victim of a robbery in this scenario is so high that it's akin to displaying a sign that reads, Come rob me, please. While it is true that technology has made our lives easier than a Sunday morning, we shouldn't ignore the risks that come with it. It's smart to take a cautious approach and do things like using ATMs in crowded places to minimize those risks. After all, it's better to be safe than to be sorry with an empty bank account. But if you like using ATMs, or if you absolutely have to use them even when you don't want to, what steps can you take so you don't get robbed while at an ATM? Many individuals who have bank accounts utilize ATMs on a regular basis, but few are aware of the associated security risks. In fact, you often hear people giving advice that may actually increase the danger at ATMs. For this reason, let's talk about a few things that may seem like common sense to some, but are often ignored by many individuals, resulting in robberies and other unfortunate incidents. Safely choosing and approaching ATMs It is advisable to use ATMs during daylight hours, since most ATM robberies occur at nighttime. Statistically speaking, the chances of being robbed at an ATM are significantly higher at night compared to during the day. If you must use an ATM at night, make sure it is well lit and visible to others. It is important for people to be able to see you easily while you are using the ATM. Additionally, avoid using ATMs that are not visible from the street or other public areas as criminals tend to prefer ATMs that are hidden behind buildings, trees, or bushes. They aim to minimize the number of witnesses to their crimes. If possible, going to an ATM with another person can greatly reduce the risk of being targeted by robbers. 
While it may not always be practical, especially if you have no control over other risk factors like having to go out at night, consider going with at least one other person. Robbers tend to target individuals who are alone. If something seems suspicious or out of place when you reach an ATM, it is best to avoid using it. Pay attention to any suspicious individuals, objects, or cars in the vicinity. If someone appears to be loitering near the ATM, it is advisable to steer clear, as robbers often linger nearby, waiting for potential victims. Trust your instincts and avoid any situation that feels unsafe. Ideally, choose an ATM located inside a bank during its operating hours. If you need to use an ATM outside of bank hours, opt for one located inside a store where there are staff present. Such ATMs, even if they charge a small service fee, provide added security. Some stores have ATMs with no service fees and certain banks refund fees incurred for using third-party ATMs to withdraw money from accounts. Minimizing time at the ATM to minimize the time spent at the ATM, have your ATM card ready and in your hand as you approach the machine. Avoid waiting until you are in front of the ATM to retrieve your card from your wallet or purse. If you're carrying a concealed firearm, be ready to draw any time too. And memorize your PIN so you don't have to search for it on your phone. If your ATM card has a chip, ensure that it is clean before using the ATM. You can use a small amount of hand sanitizer to clean it. If you need to make a deposit, organize your checks and cash before heading to the ATM. When using a drive through ATM, keep your car engine running and ensure all windows and sunroofs are closed except for the driver's window. If you are in a convertible, close the roof. Remain vigilant by regularly checking your rear view and side mirrors. Robbers who target individuals in cars often approach from the back of the vehicle to take advantage of the element of surprise. Typically, they approach from the driver's side. Some experts suggest keeping your car in drive with your foot on the brake while using drive through ATMs, allowing for a quick escape if you detect danger. However, this advice may increase the risk of a car accident more than it improves the odds of avoiding robbery. Therefore, it is recommended to put the car in park unless you are confident that you won't accidentally move the car if it is in drive while you are at the ATM. This potential danger of keeping the car in drive is likely greater for right-handed individuals who often turn their bodies leftward to use the ATM through the driver's window with their right hand, which may result in repositioning their right foot. When using an ATM Before inserting your card, visually inspect the ATM for any signs of tampering, cameras, or skimming devices. Skimming devices are often placed over the original card slot and can steal your card information. Look for misaligned or crooked sections of the machine Damage such as dents or scratches, loose components, sticky residue, unusual objects near the card slot or keypad, visible holes, or anything stuck to the machine. If the ATM has a physical keypad, pay attention to any abnormal resistance when pressing the keys. Ensure that no one can observe your activities at the ATM, especially when entering your PIN. Block the ATM screen with your body and use one hand to enter the PIN while using the other to cover the area. While some suggest entering part of your PIN with one hand and part with the other for added security, this approach may not be practical for most people. Keep in mind that there are high-resolution cameras with zoom capabilities in public spaces, so always take precautions to block views of the ATM and keypad. If there is a line of people waiting at the ATM, or someone is standing behind you when you approach, politely request that they maintain a comfortable distance until you have completed your transaction. If the person does not comply, either call security or allow them to use the ATM first. Minimize the time you spend with cash in your possession at the ATM. While some robbers may force victims to make withdrawals at gunpoint, others target individuals who already have cash in hand. If you need to withdraw money and perform other tasks, such as checking balances or making payments, always withdraw the cash last. When making a deposit that includes cash, do so first. If possible, avoid withdrawing large amounts of cash in a single ATM visit. It is safer to break down the withdrawals into two or three separate trips to different ATMs. However, be cautious not to split the withdrawals into too many transactions as this may raise suspicion of fraudulent activity and prompt the bank to prevent further withdrawals. After withdrawing cash, promptly place it in your wallet, purse, or pocket. Contrary to conventional advice, it is generally not recommended to count the money you receive from the ATM while still at the machine, except in rare circumstances. The chances of the ATM making a mistake are extremely low compared to the increased risk of being targeted by thieves while counting cash in a public location. Avoid leaving behind ATM receipts. Either decline the receipt or request that it be emailed to you if your ATM offers such an option. If neither option is available, take the receipt with you and dispose of it properly later. In the unfortunate event of a robbery, it is crucial not to argue or fight with a perpetrator. Your life is more valuable than any amount of money. Cooperate and give them the cash without resistance.
While it is natural to be in a state of shock, try to remain calm and memorize as many details about the robber as possible. Providing accurate descriptions of the thief, their escape vehicle, and the direction they fled increases the likelihood of their capture. Call 911 immediately once the robber is laughed. If the robber instructs you to leave the area, comply and call 911 once you are in a safe location. Oh, and it's also important to note that entering your PIN in reverse will not alert the police, despite any claims you may have come across on the internet.